hello. Welcome back to the Elise DeLucci Show. How you doing? Episode 47. We're in my living room. It's freezing in here. One day it's cold, one day it's hot. You know, you, you just you just don't know, you know? Anyway, let's get to it. Fact of the day. This is outrageous. Wait till you hear this, okay? Subway footlong. You know the subway footlong? Five dollar footlong. Yeah, that's right. That one. Subday footlong. It's not meant to be a foot long. The subway foot long is not meant to be one foot long. Like, what What kind of shit is that? If it's the truth. The New York Post measured the length of subway foot longs in the city, and they averaged about 11 inches. Now, we know the foot long is 12 inches. So they went to subway. They went to the sandwich chain. And the sandwich chain says, they say, with regard, listen to this bullshit answer. This is how people bullshit you all the time. With regards to the size of the bread and calling it a footlong, the Subway footlong is a registered trademark and a descriptive name for the sub sold in Subway restaurants, wait, and not intended to be the measurement of length. Have you ever heard such a bunch of corporate baloney? Because that, right? Come on. Let me get this straight. You, marketing executive at Subway, you're like, I got a great idea, guys. Let's come out with a sandwich. We're going to make it a foot long, 12 inches, a real mighty sub for the hungry person in you. We might sell it for $5. We might not. We're going to call it the Subway foot long. It's going to be a hit. And then they launch it. And it was a hit. And then... Someone annoying, like who who does this, right? Like this, what was it, some annoying staff writer at the New York Post at some at some rag in Manhattan? They decide, you know what? Let's let's go measure this, the the length of the sandwich, okay? And they find out it's not it's not a foot long. And then they approach the brand, and the brand basically lies to them. Actually, it's not really supposed to be one foot long. It's like maybe eleven inches. Oh, what the hell? But anyway, that that this is this is the lies they tell us. This is it. The subway footlong people. That's the fact of the day. It's not supposed to be a footlong. Honestly, every, every, the, you know, everybody's just wheeling and dealing, right? Oh, give me a break. You and I both know it's definitely a footlong. Come on. Who just trademarks the name of footlong? What about Nate? Why didn't you trademark it an inch long? Yeah, you know why? Because nobody wants anything that's an inch. <laughs> but you know <laughs> No, you know that I had that experience once. It was horrific. I can't even talk about it because I feel like you know, I feel like my mother's maybe listening, and she's gonna be like, "What are you? Are you doing a sexual innuendo on your podcast, Elise?" <laughs> we all know my mother's not listening. We all know my mother's having cocktails in Naples, Florida, as we speak. That's really what she's doing, anyway. Yeah, they could have named it an inch long. They didn't want to do that. No, they wanted to. They wanted to go for the gold. They wanted to have a real Napoleon situation going. We're gonna name it a foot long. And then, lo and behold, of course it's not. You know what they probably did? They probably did like every other you know business right now. They probably uh, shaved a little off the top. They're like, hey, you know what? Let's make it eleven inches. Nobody's really gonna know. Nobody's really gonna know that this isn't twelve inches long. Let's just make it eleven. We'll save money on the bread. That's like Poland Spring. Remember when Poland Spring? They changed the size of their caps of the water bottles. They used to, they used to have kind of a decent cap. The cap was nice. It was a substantial cap. It was one of those caps that you took it off the Poland Spring water bottle. You could fill it up in the sink and you could take a little drink. You know, if you had to take a, a Tylenol or a pill or something, you know, a Xanax to keep you sa- <laughs> to keep you sane, you could have filled up the little cap full of Poland Spring and just knocked it back. No, and then what they do? They made the cap half the size. The cap went from a half an inch to a quarter of an inch, like overnight, to save money. That's what that's what that's what they were doing to save money. What they told they told the world though we were saving the plastic, we were saving the environment. Yeah, sure you were. Just like subways going from twelve inches to twelve inches to eleven. Please, I, I, I'm losing faith over here, people. I'm losing faith. Speaking of losing faith, listen, listen to this. Listen to this. I'm at work. Okay, you know, my job is great. My my job is great. My colleagues are great. Beautiful, beautiful people. Let me tell you, though, what's not beautiful. I went into the office the other day, right? They didn't have cups for coffee. Now, they actually, did, forget no cups. They didn't even have, they didn't have coffee and they didn't have cups. So I'm there, right? I'm in the office. I had to go. It was my my turn, my, my cohort back in the office. Of course, you know, that made me insane because... 
because I don't work in Manhattan right now. My office is outside of Manhattan and I'm driving to work. If you ever see me doing TikToks, I'm in the car. It's because I'm driving to work. I don't really like driving anywhere, but that's what I'm doing. And, um, you know, when you go outside the city, depending on where you're going, some of the places are like, it's like as if nothing happened, right? It's like as if nothing happened. So I go to work, I park my car, I go in, I'm dying because, you know, the kids, of course, they just, they, they just keep me up all night. So I'm going to get a cup of coffee and I'm like, you know, I'm not going to buy Starbucks on the way to, to, to work. I'm not going to buy a five bucks. No way. I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go into work and I'm going to get a free coffee from, from the skeevy kitchen. And I'm just going to, you know, take it back to my office, close the door and make do. Well, let me tell you something that did not happen. First of all, I walk in the kitchen of this place. Okay. And It's a nice kitchen. It's a modern kitchen. And I see these like three giant coffee machines. They look like they were from 1975, like the bun coffee machines. Like they actually had filters and grinds. They didn't even have the Keurig, the K-cup. And not that I don't even know how to work the K-cup or the Keurig, but what I know about the K-cup and that whole system is that it seems very COVID friendly. Like you take, you put your hand on the little tiny individual cup of coffee, that little container, you drop... Drop it in the top of the coffee thing. You cut, close the thing. You push a button, and your coffee fills up in a cup. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I thought I was going into. This is what I thought I was going to get, and I and I was I had already told myself, you're going to just go into the kitchen really quick. You're not going to touch a lot of things. You're just going to get the thing. You're going to put it in the machine. You're going to push the thing. You're going to grab your cup of coffee. You're going to run back to your office, and you're going to drink it black, and you're going to suffer because this is this is because you didn't want to pay money to go get it elsewhere outside where you could have had the proper milk and sugar because I wasn't going to use the milk in the fridge. Come on. Anyway, so that was what my plan was, right? Well, you know, it, it, my plan was foiled. So I go into the kitchen, and there's these three giant bun coffee machines with filters and grinds all over the place. And I haven't seen this since, I don't know, 72? That's actually not true. I wasn't born in 72. But you know what I'm saying. They have no coffee in them. They don't even have coffee in them. And I'm like, First of all, I barely know how to make regular coffee. I just learned how to make coffee not too long ago. I mentioned it maybe a couple weeks ago. And I'm looking all around. And I'm like, okay, maybe if I could just figure out this thing, I'll just, you know, I'll I'll just do it. And then I'm I'm like, okay, now I'm going to need a cup. I still didn't have figured out the coffee yet, but I'm just like, I'm assuming I'm going to get it. Now I'm on the hunt for a cup. Looking around, I don't want to open the cabinets. I don't want to touch the cabinets. I don't want to touch anything because where I live in Manhattan, nobody's touching anything. Barely people are going places. Everything's closed. Everybody's just living inside the new normal. The four walls of their house. So I kick open a few cabinets, you know, with my foot, right? Gentle. I was very respectful of company property. <laughs> No cups to be found. So I know that there's a facilities manager in the office, and I knew she was there that day. So I walked over to her, and I asked her, and she tells me, wait for it, we don't keep cups in the kitchen. I'm like, you don't keep cups in the kitchen. You don't keep cups in the kitchen. What do you mean you don't keep cups? She says, well, you know, when when everybody was hired, we gave you um, a mug, a coffee mug. And I was like, oh, thinking in my head, yeah, got pencils in that, okay? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but what about a paper cup? You know, just like a little paper cup just to put under the coffee machine, you know, just, just, and, and I, I couldn't help to think, I could, I didn't say this to her because, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be that person, but I couldn't help to think, what if there was an emergency at work? What if somebody's choking, choking, and they need an emergency glass of water, an emergency cup of water? So they, they stumble into the kitchen. What are they, what are they supposed to do? If I know cups, I think I act. I, I, I don't, I really I want to think I'm making this up, but I'm not. I, you know how like that happens sometimes? I want to think I'm making up the fact that she told me the reason why we don't keep cops is because people take them home. <laughs> I want to say that I want to say that that's what she told me. You know, she did tell me that. She did tell me that. I want to say I'm making that up, though, because that would be horrific. Why are you taking paper cups home? Why? Why? I mean, really, I can understand you want to take a stapler, maybe a ream of paper. I get it. You know, maybe you would live, maybe you would live, pluh, Freudian slip there. Maybe you work in one of these fancy offices that have all the perks in the world, you know, and I get it. Maybe you want to take home a turkey dinner because why not? You're hungry. And yeah, you know, you've been there since seven, you've been there till since seven to 7 p.m. Take home the turkey dinner. I get it. 
And that would maybe be considered people taking advantage of company stuff, you know, or the, the perks that they offer their employees. But a cup, a cup. So this woman, she she felt bad, you know, she because I'm like horrified looking at her. I think my mouth was on the floor. Like, you don't have a cup, really? What am I supposed to do? Like, I, I drive to office, I, this office. I have to park in a car park. You expect me to get out of the office? You Wait, what you expect me to do is get up, go back to my office you know, do some me more emails, then get up, put on my jacket, close my office door, you know, to not have the spread of germs go around, get in my car, drive all the way down the highway to find a Starbucks to get up a cup of coffee, all because you didn't have cups. <laughs> Ridiculous. So anyway, she's like, I'll go find you a cup. She comes back like 20 minutes later with a styrofoam cup she dug up from God knows where. Of course I wasn't going to use that. I actually had one of those water bottles, you know, I thought, well, if I could try to figure out how to make the coffee, I'll put the water bottle underneath the, you know, those aluminum bottles. I'll put it underneath the machine. That, that'll that work. Sure, that'll be fine. No, that didn't work either because the bottle is, you know, I don't know. The bottle's a foot long. The bottle's like 12 inches long. And the cup, the space for the coffee in the 1972 machines, it's like four inches high. Honestly, I've never seen anything so ridiculous in my life. And they, like I said, these are nice people. Nice people. It's a nice company. What are you doing? So I, what I really wanted to tell you, okay, and what I really wanted to tell her, facilities manager, I wanted to say, do you know what perks some companies have? Do you know? Because let me tell you, let, let me give you a whole presentation, you know, and of course in my mind where everything turned into a raging Broadway musical, like a la Glee, I like all of a sudden curtains open and there I am in front of a giant PowerPoint screen and I'm pointing with a big fancy black lacquered pointer and I'm dancing and singing, showing her all the perks. Well, let me tell you, if you didn't know, at Google, okay, they give you, the, at Google, first of all, Google, they have everything, okay, my cousin works at Google, there's lots of people that work at Google, I, I did business with, I still do do business, I should say it did, I still, my whole career, I've been working with Google, the perks these people get are outrageous, first of all, they have massage therapists there, okay, free workout classes, they have a death benefit, wait for this, they have a death benefit, now, a lot of companies have death benefits, you know, if you work at a corporate job, they'll say, you know, God forbid, you know, something happens to one of our employees, we'll pay maybe a quarter, half of their salary to the family, to the spouse, whatever. Google's death benefit. They they pay 50% of the deceased employee's salary for 10 years. For 10 years. It's crazy. At Hootsuite, that's a social media company, they have a nap room there. They have a nap room. I wanted to say to facilities manager, you know what, if you know what, you know what, lady, how about we just nix the styrofoam cups and why don't we just build a little nap room, okay? We don't even, I don't even think we have a mother's room, a, you know, a, a breastfeeding room in my office, okay? At Campbell's, the Campbell Soup Company, they have daycare. They offer their company, they're their employees, daycare. Kindergarten, full-time kindergarten, after-school programs. They give you healthy cooking lessons at Netflix. Now, how do I know all this? I know all this because I have friends that work at all of these companies. And again, I've been, I have been—I—I ask them all the time. I mean, my last company that I worked for had nice benefits, but nothing like these. These companies are special. Netflix, fully paid, unlimited. Uh, yes, you heard this. Fully paid, unlimited parental leave. Like they are, they encourage you to stay home. If you're a new mother, they encourage you to stay home at Netflix or father. At Netflix, they have a death benefit too. They give you a million dollars. God forbid something happened to you and you're working for Netflix. They give you a million dollars. Wait, but then guess what? A few years ago, they thought, ah, million dollars. That's not so great. We're going to up the ante. They, they, they now change it to 1.5 million. I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. At Spotify, you know, the music company Spotify, also you, we host our podcast on Spotify. They have a fertility benefit. They'll pay for egg freezing. They do six months paid pater, parental, sorry, paternity. I was like, six months parental leave, please. I'm, I'm just, I, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I'm just done. I'm done. I'm done hearing about these tech companies and the, the, the giant tech giants because I work in the industry, but these tech giant companies and they, and the, and their benefits. And it's amazing. And it's amazing if you're an employee that works there, but shouldn't us other companies follow suit? I mean, really? Now I don't work for one of these companies. Like I'm saying, I work, um, in a different industry, but that is what I do. That, that, that's my thing. Digital tech, all that marketing, digital media. And I, I just can't believe it. Like 
does this, I wonder, does, does the CEO, like on a Sunday morning, he wakes up, makes himself a nice cup of coffee at home, reads the paper, and he reads all about these companies and how forward thinking they are and 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 what they do for the employees and they, you know, they have all these special rooms and parks and benefits and meditation rooms and yoga studios and stuff and and they really make you feel like your family and and they do all these wonderful monetary benefits. And he, does he ever think like he or she I should say ever think you know what? I think uh, I think we should take away the cups from the kitchen because people are stealing them. No, nobody wants your goddamn cups, okay? Nobody wants to steal your cups. We can get our own goddamn cups. You know what I'll do? I'll go to Starbucks and I'll tell them that I just bought a coffee and I need a couple extra cups. Do you mind? If I really need cups, that's what I'm doing. I'm over it. I'm over it. I actually picked up my girlfriend earlier today. We had to go. I did a photo shoot and she she comes with me and she um she's... She works in fashion. I spoke about her before. She works in fashion, and she does a lot of shoots for her stuff. And uh, so I picked her up, and I said to her, I said, do me a favor, doll. Can you bring me down, like, a water or something? I'm, I'm dying of thirst. I forgot to grab um, I forgot to grab water from my apartment. And she goes, oh, but they took out the water machines here. We don't have water. I was like, you too? What kind of company are you working for? <laughs> I mean, you take out the water machines? I don't even, I actually, actually, I don't even know why I'm actually acting like that's so surprising because I don't think I have water machines at work. I don't, I actually think that they expect us to, <laughs> to drink out of the tap. That's what I expect. Suspect. <laughs> I wonder how your company is. I'm curious what your company is like. God, 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 God. <sighs> Amazon. They have good perks too. You know what? Speaking of Amazon, okay, speaking of Amazon, have you been doing, do you do fresh Amazon fresh or any of that? You know, I do fresh Amazon fresh and obviously because, you know, it's so much easier to get it delivered than going to the store and it's so much cheaper to order it on Amazon than to buy it in Manhattan. I mean, I get some stuff at the store in Manhattan, not lately because I told you I've been having agoraphobia, you know, but I want to know what the hell is up with Happy Belly. Amazon's brand Happy Belly, they launched it in 2019. Amazon had their own brand, of course, Happy Belly, because, you know, it wasn't enough for them to be the giant, the book giant, the the, the, the record giant, the electronics giant. It wasn't enough. They needed to then, of course, continue to further capitalize on that, as any good American company would. Um, they continue to capitalize on that, and they have all of their, they make all their own brands. We know this, right? They have um, Amazon Elements. You know, the baby wipes, they have the, their other brand. They, uh, I buy these garbage bags, uh, Salimo or Sali- Salomo, S-O-L-I-M-O, the brand of garbage bags. You know, they, 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 have, they have tons of their own products. They, 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 they ship, they don't only ship their products, they obviously make these products. They're their own brands. Well, you know, in 2019, they came out with Happy Belly. And Happy Belly does, you know, milk and dairy products. So it's just crazy to me because... I'm on Amazon the other day and I'm on, and I, what, you know, I don't know. I, I guess, I don't know if I haven't bought milk from them ever. I don't really know, but I wasn't really paying attention to Happy Belly milk and I'm on, but I'm on Amazon. I went to go put this, uh, milk for the girls in the, in the cart. Right. And it was like, I don't know, like horizon organics or something, whatever. And it was like five ninety nine, you know, for like a half gallon and it's good milk. I've always bought them that kind of milk, particularly when they were little. And as I got older, I, you know, stopped, you know, with, with uh, getting this one particular brand. So I thought, you know, ShopRite brand milk is fine. Come on. But I'm, I'm, I'm putting that thing. And then I see Happy Belly. And it's like the same size milk. So it's like $3 less. And it's like, what are you, what are you doing, Amazon, that you, you are able to sell the exact same milk for $3 less? I mean, I think that it's not organic. But what, what's the deal here? What's the deal? They, Happy Belly, they're selling, they're selling, um, Amazon, they're not Happy Belly, they're selling milk, they sell cheese, they sell eggs, I was going to get a little thing of grated cheese, a little Parmesan cheese, you know, whatever brand I was going to buy, you know, I don't know, whatever, Belgioso, I don't know, Galbani, one of these brands, right, I don't know, six, seven dollars for the grated cheese, which by the way, I think is ridiculous, and that's, I don't think that's so cheap, but I was going to buy it because I was desperate, then I see Happy Belly, two fifty for the same thing, eight ounce plastic container cheese, two fifty. what? Honestly, and it's like, so of course, of course I bought the Happy Belly stuff. 
my friend was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not giving them that business. I'm not buying their stuff. I said, you want to know what? Well, I am because I, I want to be richer. Thank you. So if that means that I have to, you know, give, pay the man, then fine. I'm going to do it. Like any, any little good capitalist would, you know, <laughs> thinking about her own wallet. <laughs> right. I mean, really, I'm not saying that. Listen, if these other brands wanted to go on sale, I'd be more than happy to purchase them. But if you're going to show me a, a, a web page and I'm and I'm and I'm buying food for not just myself, I'm buying food for me and my two daughters. Okay, and we live on one salary. And if there is a web page that pops up and it's grated cheese, Parmesan cheese, and every cheese is six dollars and another cheese is two fifty, I don't know. And they all seem the same. Which one do you think I'm going to buy? Really? Come on. When I was growing up, we had milk delivered. Did you guys have milk delivered? I feel like I sound like I've lived in the 60s, but I, but I did not. But for whatever reason, it's funny. When I was growing up in Staten Island as a, a, as a little girl, my mother had milk delivered each week. And uh, we had this metal thing outside our front door. And it was this metal box. And it was, refri- you know, I guess it was insulated or refrigerated. I don't know. Not refrigerated. You know, like insulated. And... Uh, once a week, the milkman used to come. Isn't that funny? And he used to deliver milk. And I and when I was buying, I didn't even it didn't even dawn on me. You know, it didn't even dawn on me. But I was telling my girlfriend about this happy belly thing, and she's like, "Oh yeah, Amazon's the mil- the new milkman." And I was like, I, I didn't. I was like, that's so funny because back in the sixties, back in the sixties, thirty percent of American people. This is true. Thirty percent of American people had milk delivered to their doorstep every day. Thirty percent in the sixties. That people residential milk that was a thing. Pe- that's how people used to get their milk home delivery. That's how they uh, over a century ago, before refrigerators were common. Over a century ago, before refrigerators were around, people used to get home milk delivery. And then by the time the sixties rolled around, thirty percent of Americans were still getting their milk delivered to their doorstep. When I was growing up in the eighties, you know, my mother still had the milk delivered, which was hilarious. And they, they, but they dropped it off in this, this, uh, we put in the silver box outside our front door. Milk deliveries. It's a rare thing. Can you imagine? Ever, I don't know where you live, but like, um, I don't know. I don't know anybody with a milkman. Well, I guess Amazon's the new milkman. How funny. Amazon's a new everything. I don't really, you know, it's not, you know, I mean, is it, is it so, is it fair to give, to give this one company so much business, but it's, it's, I got to tell you, I mean, they're killing it, right? They're they're on the price side of things. They really are. But I have to say, ever, you know, I've been, I talked about AliExpress the last few podcasts or Taobao, Chinese websites, like ever since I go on AliExpress or Taobao and I see stuff that I would normally buy on Amazon, like silly stuff. Like, I don't know, maybe I want like I don't know, just like a plain black pashmina scarf or something like this, or yeah, whatever. Or uh, oh, here's a use case. I wanted, um, I needed a cover for my my camera on my laptop. You know, like a little uh, camera cover. And uh, I went on Amazon, and they were like, I don't know, seven ninety nine. And then I was like, let me just check the Chinese website. So I go to AliExpress and Taobao, and they were there for like a dollar. So I have to say. Amazon's killing it with their products and th- the prices and whatever and all, how, how all the stuff they're offering. But I actually, my Amazon spending has went way down, not on the food side, on the other side, has went way down because I just now go on these other websites and I see and then I, I, I'm like, you know what? I don't care if I have to wait 60 days to get my little camera cover. I don't need it to come tomorrow. I don't. I, so I'll wait 60 days and I'll pay a dollar. I, I, so my spending actually has gone down. I was proud of myself. Yeah. They're in trouble. They were, I think they got in a little bit of hot water, though, Amazon, by the way, around the holiday time because they they, they over-promised and they under-delivered. They told everybody that they were going to get their packages, you know, Amazon Primo, next day, two days later. Every single person I know had their packages delivered late. Did you have packages delivered late? First of all, if your package is delivered late, you know, you could call them right up and just, they obviously, they, 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 they give you a refund and they apologize and the whole bit. But, um... But yeah, they did. They were funny now because I did go to order something the other day, a book, and uh, which I couldn't get on AliExpress or Taobao. So I go on Amazon, and on you know I type in the book, and it pop, you know, and it pops up. And on the first screen, it says it's going to arrive by February twenty seventh. And I thought, oh, okay, you know, whatever. So I put it in the cart, and I was eager to get it. It was for work, so I was eager to get it. Put it in the cart, 
And then, as I look upon closer inspection, in the car it says it's going to be delivered March 4th, but it could possibly arrive on February 27th. And I thought, how sneaky are you? How sneaky are you? You basically just sold me in to a February 27th delivery date, and I went down the purchase funnel, put the book in the cart. It was only until I got to the cart that I realized that it was the old bait and switch. I bet they did that to get themselves out of some hot water, you know, because they told all these people, we're going to deliver your stuff on, on this date and the next date. And everything was obviously slowed down. The whole supply chain was slowed down because of the pandemic. So who knows? Who knows? That's the deal. My product of the week is so good. And I mean, like, could you die? Of course you have to buy it on Amazon. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you don't. You could buy it elsewhere, but Amazon's the cheapest. This, you might know about this. And for the guys listening, I apologize. But you know what? You should get it for your 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 wives or your girlfriends because it's really great. Or if you wear jewelry, get it for yourself. It's called the Diamond Dazzle Stick. I know. this is, It sounds hokey. It sounds ridiculous. It's, ri- it's ridiculously good is what it is. The brand is Connoisseur's 1050 Diamond Dazzle Stick. This is a jewelry cleaner, but it's a pen. It's like a pen stick jewelry clean, jewelry cleaner. It's a blue little stick with a silver cap. It's $8, okay? Let me tell you something. I was at my jeweler in New Jersey like a year ago, and um, I went because I wanted him to clean some rings. So I gave him the rings, he cleaned the rings, and this woman, she's standing next to me, and she goes, did you hear about the diamond dazzle stick? And I'm like, the the what? I literally thought this woman was trying to sell me one of those squeegee mops, like on the TV, you know, like, like you know, just made for TV kind of channels. She, I thought she was going to open up her trench coat, and there was going to be thousands of diamond dazzle sticks on the inside, and she was going to be like, have one, anyone, you so I said, now, you know, and she says, oh my God, you got to look at this thing. It's a jewelry cleaner. It's a stick. It's amazing. You click it and it's a pen and, and, the, and it's like jewelry soap thin thing comes through the pen. And I'm just thinking, you're nuts, but okay. Well, of course, you know, then at a 4 a.m. Amazon buying spree last year, I bought one. I lost it and I just found it and I used it. I, I took my old uh, wedding rings out, and I was like, let me just dazzle them up with the diamond dazzle stick, you know, because I had nothing better to do with my time. And um, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. First of all, first of all, I hadn't gotten my wedding rings cleaned in a thousand years, okay? That's the first thing. I used this stick, this cleaning stick. You know, I twisted it, and I pushed it down. And it got in between all the little crevices and the, 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 you know, all the, all that like unreachable little stuff from the, you know, the little prongs from the, the, the ring. Oh my God. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. The ring was polished. It looked like I took it to the jeweler. It was amazing. And it, it, it this, this was an $8 job and it's the gift that keeps on giving because this stick lasts forever. Well, not forever, but I mean, I'm sure you could probably get a good 30, 40 cleans out of it. I totally recommend it. How funny, by the way. How And, and yes, you get it on Amazon. But wait, how funny. This is reminding me. One time when I was at work at my last job, I uh, I wanted to schedule a jewelry clean. I, well, I wanted a... I wanted to go see my jeweler. And I called to say I was going to come in and get my rings cleaned. And, um, and you know, and, and is he going to be there and blah, blah. My colleague spun around in her chair and was like, you calling your who? And I was like, I'm calling my jeweler. And she was like, your jeweler? Who has a jeweler? And where are you calling him from? I said, my cell phone. She says, you have a jeweler's cell phone. You have a jeweler's phone number in your cell phone. I said, yes. What do you have? Don't you have it? No. She was from California, of course. They don't have jewelers, I guess, in California or something. I don't know. I actually think that it's probably because she wasn't Italian. I, I don't know. She, you know, she was like just, just a white lady, you know, just very nice. She was my very good friend. She was like my work bestie. But she was just flabbergasted at the thought that um, I had a jeweler. And to me, I was flabbergasted at the thought that she didn't have a jeweler. I couldn't believe it. I said, what do you mean you don't have a guy to clean, to, to clean your jewelry or to buy jewelry from? I said, where do, you buy, where do you buy jewelry from? And she's like, uh, well, I don't really buy jewelry that often. But, but if I was, I guess I would go to, I don't know, Macy's or Bloomingdale's. I was like, 
well, you're not going to get the best quality there. I was like, and they're, they're probably going to rip you off. I mean, why would you ever pay retail for something like that? I don't even understand. She's like, you are like on another planet, Elise. I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. I told him my jeweler, his name is Tommy Raz Matola. I think that's his last name. As Tommy Raz is for short. He's in uh, he's in Woodbridge, New Jersey. The place is Oceans of Diamonds. I, and honestly, you know what? He should give me a discount for mentioning his thing right here, okay, on this podcast. Thank you very much. He would never. But um, she she was like, Oceans of Diamonds? Like, what, what are you? What are you? What are you, like a, a permanent fixture in The Soprano? I was like, stop being so ridiculous. Stop being so ridiculous. I said everybody has guys for things, you know? Because they do. They do. They do. Somebody wrote on my TikTok the other day. They said, you know, oh, I don't know how it came up. But she said, oh, we my we have guys for everything in my family. And I was thinking when I read the comment, I was like, of course you do. Because cause I, I feel like I grew up like that too. Like, no, it's normal. It's no, it's totally normal. <laughs> like, like I, I sometimes I, I look around in Manhattan and I see people shopping in the stores and actually buying things. And I'm like, you didn't call, you didn't call, like call somebody on the phone to get that. Like you actually went into the store and bought that bracelet. Like that makes no sense to me unless you're going to like Cartier or Tiffany or one of those kind of places. Anyway, that's the end of that quote of the day. It's by the Dalai Lama. The purpose of our lives is to be happy. Great. Thanks, Dalai Lama. As we're all just searching to what the hell is happiness? How do we find happiness? I think happiness is more of an active word. It's an attitude as opposed to finding it, right? We're just supposed to be it. Just be happy. Just find the happiness in everything. Even when, even when your colleague tells you that you're crazy, and she has no idea why you have jewelers on speed dial in your cell phone. I have to find the happiness in that to say, I am happy that that is how I was raised. I am not happy at what your situation is, going and paying retail at Macy's. But I happy. my happy right now is it's an, it's an act of happiness. Anyway, the purpose of our lives is to be happy. Thank you, Dalai Lama. That's all for today's Elise DeLucci show. Thank you so much for listening. Episode 47, please leave a review on the Apple Podcast Store. I would totally appreciate it. I can't wait to meet you in person when this nightmare is over. Love to love you, baby. (laughs) 